Marco Codes. Hi, Marco here. Let me show you seven awesome Java testing libraries that I frequently use. And yes, I assume you're already familiar with JUnit for this video. Let's check them out. As you know, JUnit comes with its own set of assertions, which are okay, but not super nice. So for example, imagine you want to test that the user's name is Marco. You simply call the assert equals method and you're good to go, which is fine in this case. But if you want to do something slightly more complex, like for example, check that the user's name starts with mm-hmm, you'll have to use assert true. And when you run this, you get a super helpful error message, expected true, actual false. I think we can do better than that. Assert J to the rescue. Assert J is a simple, powerful library slash DSL for writing fluent assertions. What the hell does that mean? Well, in assert J, everything starts with the assert that method call. You put in the object that you want to write your test against. So for example, user.name. And then you get super cool method chaining where you can call methods that have to do with the type of object you put in here. So I put in a string in here, meaning I can call methods that relate to strings. For example, yes, is equal to Marco or starts with mm-hmm or does not contain any white spaces or doesn't contain a specific regex pattern. Literally anything you ever wanted to test your strings against, you can do with these methods. Now let's try and run this. Look at this nice error message saying expecting actual Marco to start with mm-hmm, much better. Now the cool thing about SRJ is this doesn't just work with strings. It works with any of the core Java types from integers up to lists or whatever have you. But not only with those, in fact, there's additional SRJ modules that let you write assertions against databases, against Guava, objects, Joda time objects, even modules where you can write assertions against JSON and XML. In short, what else should I say? Check out assert J. What about testing asynchronous workflows? Like for example, you want to publish a new user message to a message broker. And then that message gets sent to another third party, which processes the message. And the assertion you want to write and execute actually wants to make sure that the third party process that message. If you immediately execute the assertion after publishing the message, you will have a timing problem because it will take some time for the message to be processed and your assertion will execute faster. Hence, we need to wait a bit until the message gets processed. But how? Well, a tiny library called awaitility is going to help us. You just write await. At most, five, let's say, seconds until our database contains the name Marco from our user that we published here. And what happens under the hood is that the waitility actually will pull this assertion method in a specific time interval for at most five seconds until you know the assertion finished successfully. And this way you can easily test asynchronous workflows. Up next is Mokito, a super popular mocking library. Let me show you something. Imagine I have a user service. The user service has one method called register and it doesn't do anything at the moment except send a welcome email to the user you put into the method. It does that by calling mail service.send welcome email, a service that we're injecting into our user service class. Now, send welcome email, on the other hand, just, you know, calls a couple of Java SMTP specific APIs and then returns a Boolean. Now, if I wanted to write a test against the non existing business logic that my registration method does or executes, then I would like to ignore the mail service dot send welcome email. I don't want to, you know, to have a real email being sent out. How could we do that? Simple. We need to mock the mail service. For that, simply put Mokito on your class path. And whenever you create a new user service, make sure that you put in a mail service that previously you call the mock method on. That will tell Mokita to create an empty mock for your mail service. What's an empty mock? Well, it's my description for a mock that has not yet been configured to do something. Meaning when we go down here to our test method, user service register, before we call user service register, we need to configure our mock. Like so, for example, we say when anyone calls mail service dot send welcome email with any user detail class or whatever user we put in here, Marco, age, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Anyone who ever calls mail service to send welcome email will always get the result true and no emails will be sent out. Pretty cool. And by the way, if you want to make the construction 
of these mocks a bit simpler in the injection into the user service, what you also could do is, whenever you're using JUnit 5, for example, extend your test with the Mokito extension, and then there's annotation heaven going on. You just simply say, hey, Mokito, please create a mock for my mail service and inject the mock directly into my user service. And then you only need to configure your mock and you're good to go. As I said, Mokito, very popular, widespread. Check it out. Let me tell you a secret. I'm not the biggest fan of just mocking out everything inside your application, at least in most business applications, but that will go into a different episode. What would be an alternative to just completely mocking out the mail service like we did in the previous segment? Well, we could use an in-memory SMTP server. Thankfully, Java has one. It's called Wiser. So what you do is you create your user service and your mail service just a good old regular mail service, not mock it out. It will actually use Java's SNTP API to send emails. You make sure to create Wiser on port 25, for example, and start Wiser. Those two lines are all you need. And make sure to stop Wiser in the end. And then you simply call user service.register. A mail will be sent out. And the good thing is that Wiser actually catches the emails that it's supposed to send out. And you can ask it, hey, do you have one email that should be sent out? And you can even get the message content like the envelope receiver, so just the recipient of your email, the message body, everything you ever wanted to test, you know, the email body against. This way, you don't have mocks. The application works just as expected, just with an in-memory SMTP server. Check it out. Whenever you're writing file-heavy applications, you never want to put in references to local files inside your test method that just screams only works on my machine here, see users mark or test.txt. But yes, you could work with temp files and clean them up after your test, or you could just use an in-memory file system. And thankfully, Java has a couple. One of them is actually called memory file system. What you can do is create a new memory file system, which can actually even simulate different semantics like Unix and Windows. And then whenever you get paths here from that file system and write to those files, you're not writing to your disk, instead you're writing to your memory. Feel free to max out your RAM in your tests. There's not much else to say. Want to test file system access? Use memory file system. Earlier in this video, we saw how to use Mokito to mock out Java classes or how to use an in-memory SMTP server. How will we mock out a complete web service? Wiremark to the rescue, it basically allows you to create stable test versions and configurable versions of any third-party API that you have out there. Let me show you how. You simply call stop for, you say there's only one method that your REST service is going to offer. It's called info. It responds to get requests. Whenever someone calls the info endpoint, you will return a response with a header content type text plane and with the body hello world. Obviously, that could return JSON, that could return XML, everything you ever wanted to return. And then we simply, you know, use Java's HTTP client to call the endpoint and make sure that, you know, hello world indeed is being returned. This worked pretty cool. Now, I cannot show you all the options that Wildmark has because there's a gazillion of them. You have response templates, you have stuff like you can even inject, you know, delays into your responses to simulate failures and whatever have you. So simply check out its website. It's very powerful. What if using an in-memory version of an SMTP server or database just doesn't cut it? Then you want to boot up the real thing, preferably in a Docker container. And you don't want to do that manually. You want to use a library like test containers to do it automatically for you. Let me show you how to use test containers. We have a test class. We annotate it with add test containers. We have a field with a generic container where you can put in any Docker image that's out there, in my case, Redis. And there's also more specific versions of containers, for example, a MySQL container, if we have a test containers MySQL library in the class path to make for an easy integration. Now test containers will boot up a fresh Redis instance for every test method inside my class. I could also configure it to just boot up one Redis instance for my whole test class, not just every test method, or the whole test suite even. For now, in any case, it doesn't matter. We boot up Redis. We make sure to construct a Redis client. I call it Redis cache. And then we have a test method. Let me run it. Well, the only thing I do is I take my Redis client. I put in test example value. I retrieve the test key again. 
and just make sure that the value is indeed example. Uh, as you just saw, the test succeeded, it's green, which means that test containers booted up Redis, we executed our test, it made sure that the Redis instance is gone after our test as well. That's exactly what we needed. In short, check out test containers, it's a super awesome library. That's it, you'll find the source code and all the libraries I've been using in the references section down below. Who would have thought? By the way, if you have any other libraries that you're using that I just missed, please let me know in the comments. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time. Sayonara.